political columnist for the Washington Times and Marie Hart, former State Department spokesperson, all our Fox News contributors. Great to have all of you uh, with us to tonight. Thanks, Martha. Um, Charlie, take the first uh, go at this, um, the latest in this IRS scandal. Gone on forever. Well, I, I I, yeah, I, I really think that today's developments, is, it's kind of like Election Day uh, 2016 all over again. It's a complete rejection of, of uh, Barack Obama's eight years in Congress. It's uh, the Trump administration mm -hmm. sort of apologizing for the mistakes that Barack Obama made. And, uh, and, and, and the worst of it is the politicization of absolutely every aspect of our government, including the IRS. Uh, but it also puts a lie to the notion that Lois Lerner, this was just mismanagement, and that, that Lois Lerner or di didn't really do anything wrong. And it raises a real question about whether or not the, the Justice Department will, will reevaluate its decision not to prosecute her. Yeah. Because th they have evidence now that puts uh, th that raises a real question why they wouldn't prosecute yeah, her. Yeah, I mean, these people were raked over the coals by a government agency. It was uh, really quite something, Mark. Absolutely. I mean, look, Barack Obama came into office and, you know, he famously said, we're going to we're going to help our friends. And we're going to punish our enemies. And that's what the Obama's IRS did to these groups. And it wasn't just one or two or three or four groups. There are something I think there are 469 yeah. plaintiffs in the in these cases. So these are hundreds of groups. These are ordinary Americans who simply wanted to go out and petition their government and exercise their First Amendment rights. And they were stopped by their government. And there was so there was that there was the there was the the repression of these groups to stop them from getting the tax mm -hmm. status. And then there was the cover up, as you alluded to, with the with the the epidemic of exploding hard, or missing hard drives, yeah. um, so we really need what what shocks me the most about today's news. I didn't even know Koskinen was still in charge. <laughs> That's what why, I was going to say. Why on earth is you know he still I meant in charge to of the IRS? That. I was like, I bet you didn't even and, know he was running. He, he, and what? he was an acting director of the IRS. Um, not a strong speaker. We we did learn that about yeah. him uh, over the course of that. Marie, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think what's interesting is the quote you read that talked about no one should have to go through this regardless of political affiliation because their own inspector general. Found Found that it wasn't just conservative groups, it was also progressive groups that were inappropriately targeted by the IRS. So I agree with that quote. No one should be inappropriately targeted because of their political affiliation. There were a couple. The numbers were quite out of whack, but, but there but were a couple. There's no, none of them are okay, right? No, so, absolutely yes. not. So we can't, we can't just say it was only one side yeah. of this. Clearly there was mismanagement. We need better management in there. And we need to make sure people are playing yeah. by the rules but not take away. They must have had rights. the word T or party or patriot maybe <laughs> caught up in their name somewhere. And they got uh, they got caught up in the, in the computer searches that were done to find those groups. Um, okay, switching gears for a moment. I want to read something to you um, with regard to the, the sort of Bannon-McConnell battle that's going on and the Jeff Flake retirement and all of that. This was written by Ben Shapiro in the Daily Wire today. Um, and here's what he had to say. Anti-establishment anger has been on full display since 2009. When conservatives frustrated at the impotence of their leadership began showing up at Tea Party rallies and protesting against stimulus packages and Obamacare, Bannon didn't build that movement. He's getting high off its fumes. <laughs> Trump didn't build that movement. He ably channeled the movement's anger without actually agreeing with its policies. So he's saying, you know, the idea that Steve Bannon is going to change the face of the Republican Party across the country, um, that he's getting high off the fumes. <laughs> Charlie, you want to take that? Uh, but uh, but I don't really, uh, you know, it's, it seems to be a, a difference without a distinction. It, there's a, he makes a, ve a valid point there, but the fact remains, Donald Trump was the first person to actually channel that anger, that rage, into something that is actually making a difference. And and whether it's what we, we're dealing with today with the IRS or all of the other things, tax reform, all the other things that Donald Trump is either quietly or not so quietly accomplishing right now, uh, that is making those people very, very happy, and they don't care that he's not a true conservative or a libertarian or whatever yeah. the heck they want them want him to be. They like that he's getting the things done that he promised he would get done. Front page story in the Washington Post today talking about the uh, organization that Mitch McConnell's folks are putting together and that they're going to go after essentially the character of Steve Bannon. Uh, this, is, this is a fight according to that. Mark. It is, absolutely. And I mean, basically, Ben is channeling his inner Obama and saying to Bannon and Trump, you didn't build that. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, there's a little the, phrase uh, in there, too. But the uh, you know I mean look the 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 fact is you I mean uh, that uh, it's true that uh, that Donald Trump was the first person to successfully channel mm -hmm. that anger into a victory Very because true. if you look at the 2010 elections and the other midterm elections we lost a lot of Senate seats and a lot of opportunities because that anger yeah. was misdirected and the fear right now is that we're going to have a, uh, put a lot of the, this ban and effort is going to put a lot of people on the ballot like it did in 2010 that are going to lose and give the Senate to Democrats and I then wanna... you know there goes Donald Trump you know okay now we're all talking about Russia probes yeah. In 
impeachment right. and all sorts of things. So, you know, they got to be careful what they ask for. All right. Um, Joe Biden, real quick, just put this quote up from Joe Biden. He says, I haven't decided to run, but I've decided I'm not going to decide not to run. And we will see what happens. Marie? You know, God bless Joe Biden. Uh, look, he uh, he's the kind of Democrat that could compete with someone like Donald Trump. He has a lot of support still in the white working class in states that Hillary Clinton got trounced in. I'm not sure he's going to run, but if he does, he would give Trump a run for his money. And I think he needs to be the kind of leader that even if he doesn't end up being the candidate is showing future Democrats how we can win some of these Rust Belt Midwest states, places like where I'm from. It's a good model. Charlie, quick hit, quick uh, crack at that, and then I got to go. You, you know, Joe Biden, there's a lot to like about the guy, but he is a swamp creature who has been around this place forever, <laughs> and I don't think he's getting elected to anything. And, and he's never gotten elected to national office on his own anyway, so I, I, I don't think it's much We can put a friendly bet on it, yeah. Charlie. Thanks, yes. guys. Gladly. Good to see all Glad of you. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. So still ahead tonight, House Republicans narrowly passing a